All right, let's talk about um, just some stuff that might come up while you're trying to put an image plane um, in your scene and trying to put reference footage on that image plane. So yeah, if you have a camera and you haven't added your image plane yet, um, you want to go to Attribute Editor, then go to Environment on your camera in the Attribute Editor, and hit Create, and that will automatically add an image plane that is connected to your camera. Now the idea of this isn't that you look at it in the perspective view, but rather that you look at it from the view of that camera and see it. And right now it doesn't look like anything. It looks kind of weird um, because it looks like there's just a big X in the middle of my screen, but really what's happening is just that that image plane is affixed directly to the front of my camera, and therefore it looks like everything else is moving around it. Um, anyway, so this is the same thing that you'd, you'd already know how to do if you were putting in still images for modeling reference or any other um, non-animation reference. And that's obviously right over here where you can just put in an image. Um, but with animation reference footage, we want to change. Uh, there's two different things we can do. There's, the first thing is that we can change this to movie. And then when we look in here, I do have my a project set already. So you would have to make sure to set your project. Um, and honestly, I'm not 100% sure. I would have to look it up on the... Um, help documentation for Autodesk, but um, it doesn't consider everything a movie file, even if it is. Now I know that I do have some in here, so I'm going to change this to all files. And now I can see that there's some MP4 files in there. So if I open this up, it will work fine for me on my computer. Um, and I'll be able to watch my reference footage. Uh, and the other thing is that I will be able to, if I go back to my perspective camera, I'll be able to see that footage following my camera around. So I might switch to a two-pane side-by-side layout here and uh, have one of them be the in-camera view. Um, now, that might not work for everybody because whether or not your computer can read in um, multiple types of uh, video files or not is dependent on like codecs, video codecs and other um, things that may or may not be installed on your computer that you might not even be aware of. So it could turn out that your um, MP4 or even in some cases an MOV or whatever will not load in properly. But that um, is perfectly fine because the other thing that we can do is just load in a sequence of images that are numbered from you know 001 to whatever and use that as our reference rather than an actual video file now how do you make that well you have to convert your video into a image sequence so before i even do that i'm going to get rid of this just by blanking out the name and hitting enter and now that's gone i'm also going to go back to frame one and then just change this back to image and uncheck that and kind of just reset my little window here. Um, but we only, we will need to turn, turn the use image sequence back on um, once we do the next part. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Adobe Media Encoder, which you don't have to use Adobe Media Encoder if you'd like to use something else. But, um, you know, there's multiple ways of getting uh, of using uh, a software to um, convert videos from one format to the other. I'm just using this because I like it and I use it for work stuff. Um, so I'm just going to drag my footage, whatever that happens to be, directly into the queue. And the first thing I'm going to do is check the format over here. And I'm going to change this to either PNG, perhaps, or JPEG. Um, but I'll just change this to PNG. It's a pretty light file type. And I don't need to have alpha, so that's fine. Uh, and really, I just need to 
decide where to save it. Now I don't want to save it directly in here because um, that there will be upwards of like 500 images in here and this is where my textures and stuff have to go as well. So I am going to create a new folder inside my source images. Um, reference image sequences. And in there I can even make a subfolder and call this like shot01 reference sequence or something like that. Always pays to be organized. Now um, it should automatically give me my numbering at the end of it uh, without having to check on anything specific as long as export as sequence is turned on here. But the only way to be super sure is to check. Um, so I'm just going to hit uh, render and as this is rendering I'm going to go check my folder and there we go. And now I can get every frame that makes up the video saved out as its own image. And it did give them a naming convention. I, again, I would have to intentionally go look up the instructions for that if I wanted to make sure that I could control the numbering at the end. But by default, it will give you some form of numbering. I'm not sure what you'd have to do if this was going to go up to like a four digit. Um, four digit values if you had like thousands of images but so I'm going to keep those there in this folder and then back in Maya back in my image plane I can leave this on image file load in just the first one but check on use image sequence and now my video will play and each frame that I'm on in my timeline will be exactly the correct frame of the video. Now, um, last thing for this video is lining up your um, reference image so that it's not exactly in front of the things that you um, or covering up the things that you want to see. So I might just quickly create a few things here that I might be looking at. And by default, um, you know, your image, your image plane is a certain distance away from the camera. Um, so the first thing that, you, that we might want to think, look at doing is uh, I'm going to minimize that and I'm going to go down to placement and I can change the depth. So if I make the depth like 50 instead of 100, it becomes that close. If I make this like 10, now it's so close to the camera that it's actually covering up everything else behind it which isn't necessarily the best idea because now I, the only way to even see anything is by lowering the alpha and this becomes kind of hard to look at. So um, uh, another thing that we can do is not only make the, the image plane closer or further away from the camera, but we can also increase or decrease the size of it inside uh, relative to the camera. So this is starting at 1.417. I do not know how they got that number, um, but I'm going to change this to something less than that and see what happens. So, you know, having this little small reference footage here is already easier to see. Maybe I can make that like 0.5. And then I can also use my offset. And, you know, always do an experiment. So what happens if I just type in one? Well, it goes all the way over there. So clearly it has to be less than one. And I also want it to be negative in this case. So I'm just going to shove that over to the side. And I'll also shove it down. Not that far down, though. Um, and you know I could you know I can get real picky with this if I if I want to have this precisely lined up with the corner or something like that. 
Um, and now, if I move my camera around, I basically just have that reference footage playing down there at the bottom the whole time, or up here, or over here, or whatever. Um, and then what that would mean is that I could save out a play blast. I'm not going to save it, but I could save out a play blast, and the reference footage would be in my play blast. I did. I would want to turn off my resolution gate. I always forget to do that the first time, um, but that way you can show people your play blast, and if they want to see your reference, uh, like if you're in my class, then I would like to see that um, at least for the first few t uh, edits, um, and that's how you can have your reference footage placed right in your scene. Uh, one last thing is just that if you need to adjust what frame this is starting on. You can just change the frame offset here. So if I type in 70, now frame 1 in the timeline is already at frame 70 of the video, and it's going to play from 70 onward rather than starting from frame 1. All right, that's all I wanted to talk about for this video, and good luck. And don't forget, if you don't have Adobe Media Encoder or you want to use something else, you can look up plenty of free video converting software. Um, that exists for Mac and PC, and they should all have, um, or most of them should have the ability to save out image sequences as well as videos. All right, peace.